Hey there, I'm Miss Osuna, and today we are gonna work on ripped jeans. So, I thought I would include a few extras. You can see the croaky has fur around her shoulders, so the first stole is already created, and I have a video on that. So just check out rendering fabrics. And we are gonna now take the croaky and just draw in the details of our jeans. They're going to be fairly fitted, and then we're going to put lots of rips in the thigh area. So here we are making our final details for the jeans and now let's focus in on the ribs. Start off with the outer edges of rectangular shapes and we're just going to make the edges wavy lines. So some of them can be long rectangles, some can be more horizontal. And of course you can have some spaces where there are not as many ribs. Now just put straight lines that are kind of wiggly on the edges of these shapes. So they're on the outer edges on all sides, different lengths, and that just helps to communicate the rip. Now that we have the edges drawn and the straight lines, we're gonna just go on ahead and put wavy lines across the center and that's going to represent the threads that you see when you rip the jeans. So these are wavy lines in the center of all of our rectangular shapes. Some are thicker, some are thinner, so some of these lines are closer together, some are further away. Here's what you can do for the detail on our footwear. If you want a platform, just put a parenthesis on the left and the right of the bottom of the shoe and then a smile at the bottom and that will give you a beautiful platform shoe. That's one option. 
Now here you can add to this detail and put in a smile and that will be the top of the shoe. And then you can also add a strappy detail, maybe like a T strap, T as in Thomas. So that would be represented with two straight lines in the center of the top of the foot. And then once you put that T-strap in place on both of the feet, you can decide how you want the rest of the strap to connect. And you can do that with a smile shape around the ankle. Just make sure it's a little to the left and to the right of the ankle so it's a tiny bit wider. All right, let's check out another option for your footwear. So another option is to have a platform, but that also has an open toe strappy sandal feel. So let's take a look at that. Start off by putting in smile shapes for the toes. The big toe has the biggest smile. And then you can still put the parentheses and smile shapes for the platform. And then just straight lines to divide each toe. Do that on the right foot and the left foot. Once you have that in place, you're gonna go on ahead and put in a V shape for the flip flop feeling because it goes in between the middle toe and the second toe. So the first line is just the bottom of that V shape and make sure then that you define those toes on those outer edges a little bit more. Then you're gonna put a second V shape on top because one strap has two lines. So take a look at the definition here on your toenail. It's just a rectangle. So the closest to the eye is where there's a little bit of a frown and then the rest of the rectangle follows after that and it's fairly straight. So just the bit of the toe that's closest to the eye is done in a frown shape slightly. All right, now make sure that the extra strap detail is in place because one strap is two lines and make sure your sandal is wider than the foot itself and then now we are just going to put a smile but it's two straps because that's representing the second portion of our strap detail and then we're going to have a crisscross at the ankle so that you can see how it wraps around and that's all you need Remember, most of what you're doing in your fashion sketching is a series of parentheses, smiles and frowns, and shapes similar to that. So go on ahead, repeat this process for the other foot.
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is work on the skin tone. So key here for your jeans to have a nice ripped effect is to have contrast. So if you want a very light jean, go with a dark skin tone. And the opposite is true. If you want a very dark jean, I would go with a light skin tone. So I'm gonna go with a dark blue denim here. And these are my shades of colors. So the first one is camel. That's gonna be the lightest one in my group out of all three. Starting on my shadow side, I'm just gonna start filling in. And remember, you wanna fill in very lightly to start. Now I'm moving over to my light side. And notice that there's more color on the left because that's my shadow side. Less color on the right because that's my light source side. You also, of course, want to color in the bottom of the toe with the lightest color because that is going to be true and a good representation of real life. The bottom of your foot is lighter. Next, I'm going to my caramel color. And again, you always start on your shadow side. So I started on the left side of the foot. And remember to put the little bit of that skin tone next to those straps as well. That's also important. So those crisscross straps around the ankle, the skin tone obviously shines through as well. So here, don't put too much emphasis on pushing hard. You still wanna keep your touch very light. Because remember, you can always add to it, but you can't take it away once it's there. Next, I'm moving to my darkest color, and this is chocolate. And once again, remember that you are gonna have a little shadow underneath the leg and then start on your shadow side. So under that hem, when I say leg, I mean the hem of your pant, there's a little shadow. So you wanna color that in as well and then start on your shadow side. And make sure that you are being very careful not to push too, too hard because once again, you can not take this away once the marker is down, it's pretty permanent. But the opposite is true. You can always add to it if you want more. So allow your eye to have time to see the color first, 
Most people do better when they start off with lighter and then they add darker. But remember, some people do better by starting with the darkest and then adding the lightest. So try it both ways to see which way works for you. I'm gonna go back to my camel color and that was my lightest in these three tones here and what I'm gonna do is start to blend together so I'm gonna start on the dark sides pick up that paint that's already there or that marker excuse me that's already there and bring it toward the center this does work of course as well if you are doing watercolor so you could do the same exact technique and instead of using markers you'd be using watercolors so notice I'm starting on the sides where the color is the darkest and then I'm just bringing it toward the center so I'm starting this process all over again to take away some of the plain white in the middle and that's gonna allow me to have a very nice contrast of light shining in the center of the croquis even though I still do have a light source of the left side being darker, right side being a smidge lighter, I'm showing in the middle of the croquis also a second light. And that's what makes this feel much more advanced because you have two light sources. You have a light source on the right and a light source in the center. So to pull out that nice bright contrast in the middle, go on ahead back to color number one and pick up the color from the left side and pull it toward the center and don't take it away completely don't take all the white space away completely you do want to leave probably a good quarter of an inch of white space on your sketch once you do that then our next step really is just going to be to completely jump to a super light color for the final bit in the center just so that it's not stark white so it's the lighter lighter color that's not even in the three shades here that's what we're going to jump to in just a bit so for me that lighter color is called beach b-e-a-c-h and so you can see it's not even blending as far as the darker tones but i want on purpose to have this light shining from the center as well as a light source on the right side of this sketch. So there we are. Now what you can do is use a fine point black marker and everyone chooses different things, but you could use a fine point black marker if you wanted for a black shoe. But like I said, everyone does different things. I'm going to have the sole of the shoe be bright yellow and then I'm going to have the platform be a red pinkish color so again you could just use fine point black marker if you wanted a black shoe but I'm gonna go on ahead with a bright yellow this is actually a highlighter it's not even one of the design markers so you can use anything you can even use uh, twisty Crayola crayons in certain instances so play around with all of your supplies so here is my second yellow it's a little darker and once again you can just go with a solid black Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm going to have the platform part of it be a reddish pinkish. So I'm starting here with the lighter pinks on the outer edges, and then I'm going to move on and layer from there.
Now that I have my markers in place, I'm going to add some colored pencil because that gives depth. So in this colored pencil section, now I'm going to go for a reddish tone. All right, go on ahead and fill in whatever colors you want for your shoes. But remember, contrast is really nice in terms of making someone excited about buying the garment. So of course, this garment is all about jeans, but to make someone excited about it, you want to show it with all the details of how this can be worn. So that's why I'm taking extra time here to focus in on a fancy sandal so that you can really see the difference of just showing a plain shoe with your jean versus having something that's much more interesting to the viewer. So here I'm just adding a little bit of black fine point and that is going to finish off the detail for the shoe itself. And then I will add also black toenail polish for a nice high contrast because contrast is really key here. Now for the details of the sandal straps, we're just gonna go in with the fine point black and we're just gonna add a bit of a wavy uneven line to the edges. That just helps to give this beaded and encrusted feeling because once again, you're trying to get the buyer excited to purchase these jeans. So showing them with a very cool sandal and with fur stole around the shoulder is a really good way to do that. But you need to do what works for your target market. Maybe your buyer would be more excited by seeing the jean with a boot or perhaps with a pair of sneakers. So you have to make those decisions based on your target market. All right, so now that I have darkened all the edges and we are set with our strap for the beginning, our next two steps are going to involve the white. So first it's going to be white gel pen and we're just gonna go on ahead and put dots on top because this is an encrusted beaded looking sandal. And these dots are going to be able to soften some of the black and then they're just gonna add the texture of a beading 
on top of the strap itself. Next, let's brighten up a little bit. So we're gonna have the white correction pen and this is not see-through. The ink gel pen is a bit see-through, but the white correction pen is not. So we're gonna make bigger dots and spread them out, not so close together, so that now you can actually start to see the white beading detail. Okay, and then now for the toenail, for the polish, like I said, I'm doing a black because that's gonna add a very high contrast because I have a white beaded shoe. So remember just to leave a bit of white. Don't fill in the toenail space entirely. Just a dot of white for each toe is all you really need. Now let's go on ahead and intensify some of these shadows. So I have a dark chocolate colored pencil and I'm just lightly starting at the hem of that jean pant because that casts a shadow onto the ankle. And then I'm just going on the outer edges just very lightly to intensify the shadows so that we can see even more contrast. And next I'm gonna go to a terracotta brown so it's lighter than my chocolate and I'm just gonna soften those edges down just a tiny bit tiny teeny little circles and you're barely touching
Okay, now we are gonna move on and we're gonna add skin tones for the thigh area where you can see through the ripped jeans. So starting with your lightest in your color scheme, mine happens to be camel. We're gonna go on ahead and fill in in between these lines. So remember that you're not coloring it in completely flat because we want the white ripped threads to be on top. So notice I am filling in in between the white spaces. So don't go entirely across the whole patch. You want to color in very specifically, leaving white stripes across. And then you want to leave most of the white in the center. Now I am working with that caramel color. This is my second shade out of all three. And keep these darker tones on the very outer edges closest to the left and the right sides and the top and the bottom. So try not to add too much of the second tone in the center. Remember, we want that center to mostly be white, but we are showing the contrast between the skin tone and the jeans so that's why you focus most of this darker color on the left side, right side, which is the outer edges and the top and bottom, so that you can really get the sense of her skin underneath, and then you'll see those white threads pulled across when we're done on top. Okay, here we are with color number three. That's my chocolate color. Use the point of your brush tip, just barely that tip, and make sure that you add a little tiny bit on these outer edges. And now we're starting to add across the whole direction, all the way across the top and the bottom. And this is because we wanna make sure that when we put our white gel pen on top, we still do see some of that darkest tone. But remember to keep most of it on the left and the right and the top and the bottom. And then you're just adding a very little bit across the center of each of those white stripes. Those white stripes basically are going to represent white threads. And we're gonna emphasize them in a bit once we switch over to our ink gel pen and our correction pen. Okay, so now all we need to do is soften everything. So just like we did on our footwear and the skin tone for her foot, we're gonna jump to a very light shade. It's not close at all to these three shades. It's super light, just to take away some of that whiteness in the middle. Not a lot, so notice I'm just skipping spaces and I'm just taking away a little bit of that white space. Okay, now it's time for us to fill in the denim around the beginning of our patch. So I so I've so I've got I've got pretty close. They represent one blue. And you're going to go on ahead and get started with that lightest 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 color. So notice this lightest color is not super close to those other 3, but this is important. You want a super light color even though I'm going to end up with a darker denim. You want a super light color just to start on the edges. So go on ahead and fill in around your edges 
with a super, super light color. And then you are going to use those other colors and you're gonna mix this lighter color with those darker blues on a tin metal surface. You could even do it on a plastic surface like your um, palette. Okay, now I'm going for my three darker shades and I'm around these edges. I'm not covering over the lightest blue though. So this is just closest to the skin and some lines representing the rips. But I'm not completely covering over that lightest, lightest blue. That lightest blue is just there to give us a sense of layering and texturing. Now I'm gonna move on to a second shade and I'm just gonna fill around these edges very gently, not overpowering that lightest blue. I'm using the point tip of my marker, the fine point side, and I'm just defining the inner edges next to the thigh. So I'm going in these wavy uneven lines and I am pulling out a few straight lines as well. This happens to be the darkest of my markers, so that's why I'm being very careful not to overpower anything. I'm gonna jump to the second darkest after this. And the reason, of course, is because I want to define that edge closest to the thigh very, very clearly, so we can see the rip very clearly. All right, so here now, back to my second lightest, I'm just pulling out from the ripped area and going outward. And I'm just making wiggly lines and uneven lines. So you can see that this is now starting to look like a full rip, and that's the goal. So that's why I did it in that particular order. Next, I'm going to that super light shade and I'm pulling from the darker shades and pushing up and pushing left and pushing right. So I'm lifting up the color from those darker shades and pushing outward. And that is starting to be the beginnings of our denim right around the edges where the rip is. Okay, now it's time for the white gel pen. And now I am starting on the inner thigh area. And I'm just wiggling lines, moving my hand left and right. And I'm creating some very nice thread pieces. And I'm gonna pull those down as well. I'm gonna pull them to the left, I'm gonna pull them to the right. And then eventually I'm gonna go across the thigh because I want lots of white to show through because this is a very, very ripped jean. But we're not seeing a full thigh exposed. It's not exactly a hole, it just is a rip. As I go left and right across the, th the thigh, basically, is what I'm doing, across the thigh, you can see because we left a lot of white spaces originally, the white is now showing up beautifully. Typically, acrylic, excuse me, typically the ink is somewhat see-through, 
but it's not because we did not entirely cover with skin tone under there. So that's the key of leaving some space white. That just means uncovered. All right, so you could stop here if you wanted to have your denim show more skin, but I'm gonna cover even more because I truly do wanna have a feeling of ripped, but not actually being able to see a lot of skin. Now I'm gonna go on ahead and fill in around this rip. So I'm going to the lightest, lightest color once again, and I'm going to pull out some of our whiskers. Those are the dark spaces that you get in your jeans just from wear and tear, usually near the crotch, and they go horizontally. You can have as many or as little as you like. Okay, so for the rest of the tutorial, I'm just gonna basically render a basic jean. This is gonna be a darker jean. So I'm taking my lightest color and I'm taking a dark blue and I'm gonna spread that dark blue onto a tin. You can do this on a plastic surface or a paint palette, for example. I'm just scribbling it onto the tin and then I'm going to put it away. Now I'm gonna use the ink that I have spread on that tin in combination with my lighter marker so that I can get gradient shades of that marker. But I do have a separate video on rendering denim that goes into great detail on this.
So here I am just dipping the lightest marker into that blue that I spread onto that tin. And I'm just going in where the edges of our seams are and the whiskers. But once again, I do have a separate video dedicated to this process. In that video, I have used a light marker that is blue with a black and you can do that as well. But in this case, I don't want to render in that same way because I want this to be a more true indigo blue and not so light like I did before. Okay, so from this point on, I'm just gonna speed up our video so that you can jump ahead. Like I said, there's another video that covers this exact detail, but I wanted to focus here mostly on the ripped portion. And then I want you to jump ahead and be able to see the stitching. So if you wanna check out that other video, it's rendering uh, denim jeans. You can go on ahead and check in the section of our rendering fabrics. And I'm just gonna speed up as I go back and forth from the lighter marker into my darker marker. And eventually I'll add some color pencil on top to give a nice texture. All right, so after you get the twill fabric that the denim truly is by adding that color pencil on top of the marker, now we're gonna go on ahead and add stitching. Typically, blue denim has a brownish color stitching or a goldish brownish color stitching, so I'm using a gold metallic pen 
and I'm just adding the broken stitch line. And in some cases, if you really analyze your denim, there's a single line. And in other cases, there's a double line. So I'm going to add both. And this is an antique gold metallic gel pen. Just in case you didn't know, we do have this same video rendering that fur, and that's on rendering fur under our fabrics section. That's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something that will help make your denim come to life. I'll look forward to hearing all about what you've done. I'm Miss Osuna, and I can be reached on Instagram at Corey Osuna. And until we meet again, happy sketching.